Hey students, welcome back. We're going to be creating a new program here that will show you how to create variables and assign value to them. We're going to be making a Win32 console app. I'd like you to call it variables and set it up the way I have it here. Click OK. Make sure you come into application setting and create an empty project as always. And then make sure when you add a new object, you add it to the Source Files folder. And new item should be a C++ file with the same name, variables. Okay, go ahead and add that. We have variables.cpp now, and here we are. Okay, as usual, you want to go ahead and put your name, the date, and maybe the name of the program how to use variables, something like that. And then, uh, as before, we need to have an include statement. Uh, we want to include the IO stream library. No semicolon at the end of that. We also, however, this time, are also going to include something else that we didn't use last time. So another include statement. You can have more than one. Here we're going to include the string library. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Another comment, uh, use the standard namespace. Okay, again, uh, we know how to do that. We start with the word using namespace std semicolon. Okay, now after that, we uh, start our main function, which we learned about last time, always has a return type of an integer, so you say int for integer, main, then instead of empty parentheses. Now we'll put an opening curly brace, go down a couple lines, and put a closing curly brace. That marks the entire body of the main function. In this program, we're going to introduce several types of variables, integers, booleans, characters, floats, and strings. I'm, gonna, I'm now going to show you how to create each of those types. For example, if I want to create an integer, I write int and then I give the name to the integer type variable. In this case, I'm going to call it points. And then I put a semicolon. I have now declared an integer type variable called points. Let's go down another line. To create a Boolean type variable, I put in B-O-O-L. A Boolean variable is a kind of variable that can hold only a true or false value. So we're going to create a variable, a boolean variable called play again, semicolon at the end of each of these lines. Next, I want to create a car or char, depending on how you like to say it, a car variable which holds a simple character, meaning only one letter. So, uh, for example, things like my middle initial are the type of variable that might be held in a char variable or car variable because it only consists of a single character, my middle initial. How about next, uh, we're going to create a float variable. A float is a number that has a decimal point in it. So we'll just say a temperature, like uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius, might be a float type variable. And last but not least, a string variable. Strings uh, are just names, uh, anything that's a string of characters, letters, or numbers. So for example, I might have a string variable such as my pet's name. Okay. Now you can see I've now created five different variable types. Each one is different. I have an integer, which holds whole numbers, Boolean, which holds true or false values only, a car variable, which holds a single letter, a float variable, which holds a number that has a decimal point in it, and a string, which is just a string of letters, numbers, or characters. All right. So I've now declared each of these types. That's simply how I declare them, is to give the type of variable it is with a name after it. Now, how about when I want to assign a value to these variables? For example, let's go back up here to where I declared an integer variable. Just right below that, I'm going to go down one line, and I want to assign a value to this variable called points. How do I do it? I simply type in the name of the variable, then I put a space, an equal sign, which is actually the assignment operator. We call that an assignment operator. Points is assigned the value. And then let's just put, oh, a number there, like a thousand. Okay, points equals a thousand. 
and then put a semicolon. I've now assigned a value to that variable. Let's go down under the Boolean variable. Again, it can take a value of either true or false. So I simply say play again is assigned the value true. We see that turns blue because that's a keyword, has a special meaning. How about a car variable? How do I assign that? I simply say, uh, excuse me, the name of the variable is middle initial. And then I assign it a value of, well, in my case, uh, M is my middle initial. Now, what have I done there? I've actually put a set of single quotation marks around the M. Whenever you define something that's a car uh, variable, you have to define it in this way with, with single quotes around it. A float, again, is a number with a decimal point value. So I'm going to go down and say temp is assigned the value of, no quotes around this, just put a number, how about 75.46. Okay, semicolon. Last but not least, a string variable. If I want to give a value to pet's name, I simply say pet's name. Oops. Well, let's go ahead and do that just for a second. Pet's name is assigned the value. Now with strings, I put double quotes. So my pet's name is uh, Lulu, one of my chickens. And then I put a semicolon. Now, I did this on purpose. I have an error here. Here I have a line, a uh, red line underneath this. It says error, define pet. The identifier pet's name is undefined. And you might say to yourself, what does that mean? I don't understand. I declared pet's name here. Well, you have to remember that your variable names are case sensitive. In this one, you have pets and then capital N name. And, um, excuse me, but in this one down here, I have a small case N. And so they're actually not the same variable name. As soon as I change that N to an uppercase N, you see now the red error line goes away because I no longer have an error. Okay, so I have now declared five different types of variables and given them a value. And um, then I'm going to go ahead down a line here, put in my system parentheses quote pause, like we did in our previous assignment. And I can go ahead and save my work and go ahead and run it. Fill the solution. Looks like it built successfully, so now I can go in and debug it. And what I get here, interestingly enough, is just the simply the statement, press any key to continue, which we know is my pause, system pause line right here. So my program ran, it declared these variables, and gave them values, and then simply uh, closed the program. That doesn't mean that, I, uh, that my program didn't work, it actually did. Uh, however, I did not tell the program to print out or display any of these values, so it just went ahead and assigned them and then closed the program. I'd like you to go ahead and create your program just like you see I've done here, save it, and then we'll come back in our next assignment and show you how you could use a program like this to be a little bit more interactive.